five, four, three. All right, everybody, welcome to Kilgallen's Pub. This is the podcast where I, comedian Joe Kilgallen, like to sit back, have some drinks with people, and recreate that bar conversation you all know and love. Follow the podcast on Twitter at Kilgallen's Pub, on Instagram at Kilgallen's Pub, and I'm at Joe Kilgallen on all the platforms. We are on the POC, People of Comedy Podcast Network. Thanks, everyone, who's been listening. Really appreciate it. Got a really fun bonus one for you. Dear, dear friend of mine who I haven't seen in a while, and I'm so happy to see him. One of those faces that just lights up a room. Oh, you Joey. do. You make me excited. When I Joe. see you, I get – Because I've never seen you. Like, I know you get in You said moves. you just got boners in traffic. I – yeah. <laughs> and that is now – it feels like we're poking holes in that. <laughs> Sometimes I do, man. Okay, all right. You always keep me on my toes, too. <laughs> You've been on past podcasts I've done where we've talked about sports, and now we get to talk about everything. Good. Which is what we've always used to – because you and I, I remember going to um, the Rustic Inn. Yeah. Some great conversation yeah. over, over a big thing of fries. Yeah, yeah. Hey, good fries there. Good grilled cheese, too. You would order the Cheap fries. Beer. I'd eat half of them. Yeah. No, that's the Rustic, baby. It's the Rustic. I'm, I'm excited to have you on. Here, tell me how stupid I am. Today – I don't think you've said who I am yet. Oh, I have not. <laughs> I told you guys I was excited for this I mean, podcast. I'm down for it to be like a mystery guest. <laughs> I'm such a moron. Way to keep him I, on forgot, his toes. I forgot. I was so pumped to see you. I wanted to just get into it, you know? <laughs> this really is like being at a bar. Right? Yeah, there's no like weird no introductions. Why it's would just I? like get in. Let's get be in. human. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, and you're, you're not even drinking right now. Uh, I'm, I'm having I'm, water. I'm two sips into a uh, very watered down beer right now. Yeah. Classic see, what lager, you're drinking is pretty beer. close to water. It's close to it, but I like it. There's something about it. Just, it just feels like America, damn it, in my hand. I get good, it. A beer like this. I get it, man. I'm from where the beers came from. Yeah, Wisconsin, okay? Milwaukee boy over here. So this is Gareth Reynolds, everybody. Hello. On the podcast. Uh, Gareth. Mystery's over. Gareth, as a lot of you know, is the co-host of a couple great podcasts. One is called The Dollop, and the other is called Point vs. Point. Yep. That he does with Dave Anthony and Evan Mann. Yep. Both great names on those two. Yeah. Is Dave Anthony a stage name or is his real name Dave Anthony? His stage name is Dave Arachi, <laughs> and his real name is Dave Anthony. Okay, that works out pretty yeah. good. Because I've discovered this lately that uh, there's a lot of comics who have two is first names right? and they're bullshit. There's a comic I know named Drew Michael. Michael's not his last name. Yeah, I get what. And it, what is his last name? His last name's like Ward Jabakitstein. <laughs> it's Zerman. Zerman? Yeah. He thought he wanted to back off from the Jewish nature in case people couldn't tell by looking at his face. God. Well, that's a good we're, era. We used to work together. We're, we're friendly, so I could say this about him. It's fine. Okay, sure. It's fine. You're friends with a Jew. Yeah, I got a couple. You're open. You got to have a couple in your pocket. That's cool. No, <laughs> I, 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 I surround them. myself with them. And why wouldn't you? Yeah, no. My cat's a Jew. <laughs> yeah. Your, your cat, Jose, is Jewish? He's a Jew, yeah. That's, yeah. that's a well-rounded. A Mexican Jewish cat. Is Jose Cohen full name? Uh, he, does, he actually goes by Michael. <laughs> Jose Michael. But it used to be, yeah, it used to be. Yeah. <laughs> Cohenstein? Cohenstein. There you go. Very yeah. good. So, Gareth, uh, I got shampoo in my eyes earlier today. You got what? Shampoo in my eyes. Dude, I thought you said poo in your eyes. And no, then I was man. like, he really saved a banger for the podcast. Because <laughs> we, we had a good we were talking 45 minute car right over here. Four hours of traffic. Yeah. And you didn't mention you had, I had poo in your eyes. I had to save it. So what, what does that mean? Why don't you use your baby's shampoo? You're a daddy. I should, but like I have to use dandruff shampoo because I, I have some great dandruff. It's. It's okay. Safe place. You're friends with Jews. You have dandruff. This is a safe I'm a place. I'm person. You're not. You're human <laughs> is what you are, Killy. And that's I, a new name for you. Killy? Killy. I, think I, I had friends call me Kilgi. Kilgi's awful. Is that a bad one? Kilgi's not good. My, my one friend called me Joke Ilgallon. It's a really stupid one. <sighs> yeah. I don't I think like that one at all. Were these Special the Jews K? saying this? Special K. I want to say. Special K uh, <laughs> so was like good. That, it's certainly a like, C character on Breaking Bad. It would, Has right? Yeah. yeah. I think I would have been a good one of those. Okay. I, I got the – people think as I got broad shoulders that it would look good shirtless. It's bad. No. I've got an in-cave chest, so I feel like I would play a good meth head just Do you want to take that. your shirt off? Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, I don't. Do you have dad bod? That's I'm getting so I got a hot little, right now. It's not. Oh, uh, Joe. That was like five years ago, man. It's what so it? hot right now. What's hot now? That's James Weatherby. Is it back to good bod? Hey. Yeah, I think it's back to regular bud. It had a good run, though. Yeah. It should be. Well, how are you doing underneath the shirt? You pretty good? I yeah yeah I don't have kids so I can go do stuff. Do you work yeah. out every day? Pretty much yeah. Do you get shampoo in your eyes? I because uh, it happens too often. It's I, embarrassing how often it happens. Well, what are you me. doing? I just feel like I need to put like I need to be like a little kid where I dip my head all the way back so it goes the other way. I don't but know. What are, what are your what else are you? It's once every other maybe once every ten days. How much shampoo are you using? I'm trying to really scrub it. You're a it father. In. Get it together. I, I do a lot of things right as a father. I'm a good dad, dude. Uh, but I don't so brag about a lot of shit, but I'm kicking ass in the dad game. Get this. 
I bought puzzles for him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're working well, on how are you shampooing? I, I put it in the hair, right? Sure. And then I scrub it all around. Great. And then I dip back, but I think I don't realize that I'm sudsing it forward. How and are you sudsing forward with a dip back? I, I think I dip back. I go back too far. Like, well, you, like JFK if, back into the left when that happened to him. You notice his hair kind of That should flips. be a shampoo, back into the left. Back into the left. Instead of head and shoulders. <laughs> uh, but aren't you? can't you just put your head under the fucking thing and just have it washed on your face? I don't trust it going on my face. I feel like that's a guarantee to get shampoo in your eyes. Are you? Do you have eyelids? Do they work? I don't trust Can them. Can you close them? <laughs> They're very thin. These eyelids. Are your you, eyelids thick? Do you have look, thick lids? I'll tell you. As someone who's shampooed more than he's podcasted. You can shampoo, and then you can lean forward into the water, and it will just go down your face, and it'll figure it out. I think I got scarred as a kid. When I was a kid, I got shampoo in my eyes aggressively, and ever since then, I've just – it's been too long. I got I to gotta take See, a class. This is, I mean, I don't think we can solve this. You need a psychiatrist for this. <laughs> this was too much to start the podcast with. It's I a lot. Save this one I'd rather more. it be regular poo now that I'm hearing it. Poo in your eyes. That's how you get pink eye, though, <laughs> which I'm worried about because I've got I, – I deal with a lot of shit. Oh, yeah. I'm you're a stay-at-home dad during the day. My oh. son just turned two. He's taking yeah. he- healthy dumps. No, you're... And I pick up my dog shit when I go for walks. Well, that one is fine. But it's, yeah, your life is definitely... There, you have more shit in your life than most people's. But still, I can't complain. Because I'm a straight white man, Gareth. That's right. No, you're not allowed to have problems. You're not allowed to have problems. Nope. We'll get into some problems. But I wanted to talk... Uh, this... You you wrote for Arrested Development. I did. You're your staff new, new your writer. New uh, season comes out March What was 15th. your title? Are you staff writer? I ended up being a co-executive producer. Co-executive producer. I wanted you to say it because it sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, you were a fan of that show before, Oh, right? yeah. Of course. Who oh, wasn't? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You ever think to yourself, like, when oh. you got when you got that call? No. I always wanted to ask, like, if I ever had a pro- professional athletes on here, I'd want to say, how how big did your dick grow when you scored that game-winning goal? How, when you hit that, that three-point, like, I... That's our equivalent, a writer's equivalent of getting hired on that. Like someone who got hired for Seinfeld season six must have been like, I can't believe this. Oh, t- and that that's actually – that's a great comparison because it was like – it was – you know, I, I just, of course, never thought I would work on that show or work with those people or anything like that. And then uh, and then as it kind of played out, it was just crazy. And then what was crazy was when it stopped being crazy. You know, it was just like a job – like it was, you know, a hard job. <laughs> like yeah. it was – but – when I walked, uh, when we were like starting shooting, because we were writing while we were shooting, when we were doing that, I the first time I went and walked on the penthouse uh, set, I was like, "This is just insane!" Wow. Yeah, it was a trip, and I, it's cool because I have a writing partner, and uh, Evan Mann, and, and he like we both were able to be like, "I mean, this is fucking crazy." Yeah, you yeah. should though. I, yeah. I I don't like meeting people who are just like. Well, you know, yes, I was a fan of it, but I was professional, and you try to keep it under re- – no, you should definitely have that moment of, holy fuck, I can't believe we get to do oh, this. Oh, dude. Well, you know, last night a guy came to my show, and uh, he handed me a card after that said Tobias Funke Anal Rapist, which nice. is one of the jokes from the show uh, where he's an analyst and a therapist. And I an was anal like – rapist. <laughs> yeah, and it, yeah, and, and it's right, spelled like that. And so I'm like – the fact that I texted the because I the guy who came up with that joke, which was like one of the funniest things that had been on television up until then, he, I texted him last night and I was like, it is amazing that I am able to like text the guy who came up with like that joke and just be like, <laughs> look at what I got, you yeah. know. And then it's it is surreal. I never heard anyone say like, yeah. Then it becomes, oh, this is just my life. Which I is see also Jason Bateman every day. Which is also so bizarre too. When you when you are like, you know, you're like, it's just weird. That's weird. To be like, I don't think it's weird anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I'm writing this stuff and like for these characters and all that shit. Because that show had such a big cult following, which is why it came back. I watched it. I know this sounds like a hipster brag and like I was there before it got canceled. on uh-huh. My dad was really into it because my dad retired at like 50. So he just became a TV junkie. I think it first came out in 04, right? Something like that. James, yeah. you want to check uh, Arrested Development's initial run yeah, for yeah. me, if you could? I think book. you're. I think you're dead on. With I think point. it went like oh four to oh six. Cause it did three seasons, like fifty episodes, perhaps. Yeah. Because toward the end, they were even making jokes about how okay, now we're only thirteen episodes. Oh, 18. oh three. Oh three. Well, one out. of the best. One of the best jokes they they made from that time was when their order got. I can't remember who I was talking to, who was recounting this, but they uh, had gone from like twenty four to 18 or something like that and they'd found out that day oh it was uh, ben hoffman that's who that's who was telling me this and so he was like on set the day that they were shooting this scene where they just gotten just that day taken down from like 24 to 18 something like that 
And so in the script that he got when he was about to shoot that, there was a joke where it was just like, uh, well, we've got it. We, we, we need to, do, we're not doing 24 homes anymore. We're doing 18. And they're all just like, yeah, but the order was for 24. Like we need we, like, well, however many houses it was, it yeah. was like the whole thing's constructed to lead to this is going to mess the whole thing up, you know, about the condos and shit. That's why I just <laughs> loved it so much because they had like jokes where they kind of poked fun at the industry that they were in. Oh yeah. Man, they had it where they did, I think it was like in the last season before they got canceled in season three, where they're like, on the next episode, someone is going to get murdered. And then they went real fast through, and one was like a random old lady. Yeah, who right, was right, yeah, right, right. So they killed the racist <laughs> right, old lady right, right, who yeah. called the waiter a colored boy or something yeah. like that, which was just like. No, they were always trying to spike their ratings up. I mean, it was it was a show that was everybody you, that I knew loved, and then, you know, just didn't seem like it. It caught on everywhere else, but it's still it is one of those shows that it's like it's never stopped growing and like finding an audience. You know, how is Mitch Hurwitz? Is he cool? He's awesome. Yeah, got him. He is a uh, I mean, he truly, you know, it sounds fo- he is a genius. I mean, the guy like genuinely is like has a, a skill set for writing and for characters and just a com- I mean, that's why that show kind of felt like it was a gear shift because Mitch is ability to find comedy and jokes through the characters and just the writing i mean it really is kind of i like just wish it would have originally if, it, if that show was originally like on nbc i think it would have done eight seasons nine seasons in a row yeah i think fox has had still kind of has proven they don't know how to promote a show that isn't a cartoon obviously simpsons family guy but family guy they even fucked up and had to be brought back yeah where because I, I, I my dad was into it and he's like you got to watch this show it's hilarious and he was a big fan of uh I'm blank on the actor's name who plays the father. Obviously, Jeffrey Tambor. Thank you, Jeffrey yeah. Tambor, because you know watched him in like the Larry Sanders show sure, back yeah, in the day yeah. and all that Hank. stuff. Yeah, and so I got into a watching, and then when the DVDs came out, I think that's what kind of helped make people oh, think. Oh, for sure. Netflix was like, well, we this is obviously a proven hit, and we could bring it back, and it's yeah, be great. Yeah. So I'm glad for that. And I was watching the special features on the DVD. And it was when Tobias was doing that. They did an episode where he was like Mrs. Doubtfire, basically. But he didn't realize yeah, he was Mrs. ripping Featherbottom. Yes, yeah. Mrs. Featherbottom. Yeah. And <laughs> some of the best shit. So it's like, it's so good. So he's like, it's in between <laughs> takes. And he still has like all the makeup on. Yeah. He's like, all right, well, we won this award, this award, this award, blah, blah, blah. Uh, critics, number one show for this. TV Guide's number one show to watch. All, like, they named like 15 awards, all this kind of stuff. And he goes, if you can't market, and he goes, if you're having trouble getting viewers on that, maybe pick up a fucking marketing book. How about yeah. that, Fox? Like, he's just talking shit. And everyone on the set just starts cheering for him because he went like on this him. rant. And I agreed with it. I remember watching that going, yes. And then yeah. I watched the next season, and then it was canceled. And I was like, this is what, like, everyone feared. They knew they had this genius show on a network that did not know how to promote it. Yeah. And then everyone yeah. got popular over the DVDs. And it's, it, look, obviously, I think it was the right way to go because. If, if it goes the other way, you don't get to work on that great show. Right. Very true. So very true. No, no way. In the <laughs> no. Well, that was what was great about it was like I, we met like it was a perfect like introduction to Mitch because it's like I met him working on this other show that he was producing. And then like so I saw him like two times a week for a couple hours. And that was like a good like into, you know, uh, that was like it, it's almost like when you're doing a set and, you know, like someone maybe is going to book you for something like I knew I was going to be like, all right, you know, you got two you get a little two hour window here to be like really good at this shit, you know, like yeah. prove yourself. And then uh, and then, yeah, and then it just kind of worked out, you know, that's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful but it story. is totally is one of those things where you're, I mean, even watching Mitch work, I mean, you really are watching, you know, I'm, totally. And it's not only cliche, like not only it. like a, like on a show that maybe, you, you know, again, you are like working on this show that like. Such when I was a kid, show. you know, when I was like a teenager, I would be like, holy shit. Or, you know, in college, whenever the fuck it was on when I was a kid. Yeah, that is so, – man. And you also – you you have like a life that – look, I'm very happy with my life. I've done a lot of you cool talking shit. You talking life swap? I'm not talking – You want to do a life swap? Maybe for a couple Get days. Get some poo in my eyes? Be yeah. Joey? <laughs> I think you have a lot of fun, man. I, my, my son's really into Toy Story, so I watch Toy Story all day. No, you're just He's telling the me toys, man. Lion King, but you cut out Mufasa death. Well, I had to skip that. I had to skip that. We watched Beauty and the Beast the other day. I just skipped the scene with the wolves getting a little too crazy with the beast. Yeah, you know, sure. I don't want him thinking. Sure. Because we have a dog. I don't want do- wolves, dogs. Same also, thing in his brain. You, if you do Snow White, you got to skip the scene where Dopey almost beats Sneezy within an inch of his life. I mean, that scene is graphic. That no, is. No, I'm leaving that scene. That is a graphic beating. He's got to know how it's like in the streets. Yeah, that's you know right. I mean? thank, I thank good for I I think I, di- yeah. instigatory. The dwarf was <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah. I just don't want him seeing anything with dads dying. Mufasa dying is too much for a kid. Oh, yeah. Because I'm his Mufasa, and he's my Simba. That's how I view it. Is, I that, mean, is that too much? It's a little too cheesy. It's bold. It's bold. It's bold. 
Dude, I'm the fucking king. Okay, I mean, it's not getting less bold. I meant to say... <laughs> I was trying... It's not, you're right. Well, back to the life swap. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm not going to win the more I talk about Disney movies. <laughs> I've cried at a few of them. I've really softened no, the fuck up. No, that sounds fucking great to me. No, I needed to soften yeah. up, man. You know me as being a little bit of a wild card. Yeah, no. Lose his temper here Joey Fists. Yeah. yeah. You Ready lose your go. temper? What? I've gotten a lot better, though, man. Gotten, yeah, you're calmer. Got a little spiritual. Yeah. Gotten, not like religiously. More like, let's drink some more water. <laughs> like that sure. Kind of, no, that's my spiritual. Right, sure. I'm not, I'm not going to church. I'm just, I'm well, they got water more. in church. They do. It's and Jesus water. It's, it's Jesus Best kind. sweat. Comes from his little waterfall he's got going on. It's pretty nice. Yeah. He's got a good waterfall Oh, he's situation. got a great cascading waterfall. Jesus doesn't chase waterfalls. God though. set him up with a great yeah. plot. He Sticks was like, just stay, stay, stay here until we really need you. Yeah. I think that's a good move. I remember thinking, God, did you go to church a lot growing up? No. No. Man, I would, go to, I would right? go to church. If I slept over at a kid's house on a, a Saturday and they were religious, then maybe I'd go to church the next day and I'd just be like, what's going on? I'd be like, why do you have to do this? this That's this all I think. I'd just be like, it seems like a lot of bullshit. You were having your time. Well, I mean, uh, maybe, but I still, w- I was like, well, what, it's like, you, do, you don't learn. Like, you know. It's know. boring. If That's it, why whenever a politician, remember when Obama was running initially, like in 08, people were saying, his pastor, that uh, Jeremiah something or other. Jeremiah Reverend, Wright or something. Yeah, like that, yeah. He, they're like, he said some anti-American stuff, and how do you stand by that? I want him so badly to come out and be like, listen, like 99% of Americans, when I go to church, I'm thinking about, ooh, kickoff is in 20 minutes. Yeah. Hopefully he wraps this shit up. I'm not really listening. I've gone, I have remember going to church all throughout grade school. If you would have asked me as I'm walking out the door, what did the priest talk about? I'd have been like, I have no fault. You could put a gun in my head and I would die. Yeah. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. Oh, I yeah. I wasn't paying attention. And the songs. In my own brain. Got to pick up this things. book and just be like, yes, Kay was here and he did it on the hill. That's like, mm-hmm. Brutal Come songs. On. The standing up and the kneeling. What kind of ego uh, deity is this who needs the constant gathering and singing of songs about him? I don't, who, what a, what I don't what a think lunatic. he does. I think they want that money. That's this sweet, is like some cash. R. Kelly shit. That's local. By the way. I'm gonna I'm gonna announce it because I'm not gonna name names. You're doing a show with R. Kelly. I'm not. Oh, Although, sorry. If, 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 you're opening for R. Kelly. The, if I got some of the door, <laughs> you're maybe, going to Australia with R. Kelly <laughs> and you're doing comedy before his shows. Guys, I'm really. And you about stand him. by what he did. You were saying in the car right over here. You don't think he's a bad guy? Bad rap. You said. They all looked over 18. Thank um, you. <laughs> I can't yes and that one. Yeah. I'm not gonna flow with that one. Uh, but speaking of R. Kelly, though, I mean, what a what a musician, uh, what a what a talent, and um, you know, we all have things that we're not proud of, and I think people should just get over. No, I'm kidding. I was gonna He's say. Uh, you mentioned R. Kelly, though. No, you did. Did I mention R. Kelly? No, no, I did. Okay, you brought it up. <laughs> but I found this out last night. Last night after a show I was doing, I'll tell you who off of air. You've never yeah. met him, but you know who it is. Uh, a friend of mine brought up. He goes, "Hey, remember that girl that I used to bang back in the day?" And then he, he described her. He was this girl that was. She was born in Sweden, but she was half Middle Eastern, half Polish. If you want to know what that mix looks like. Middle looks, Polish. Looks amazing. Yeah, Middle okay. Polish. Uh, anyway, he goes, dude, she has 400,000 Instagram followers. I go, holy shit. Like, what does she do? He goes, she just posts hot pictures of herself. I go, damn, women are lucky. And he showed me the pictures. I'm going through, holy fuck, man. Like, I'll show you the pictures later. Unbelievable. Gorgeous woman. And then um, he said, because someone said, she's probably because she lives in L.A. now. Someone said, oh, she's probably banging a bunch of famous guys. He goes, actually, I know a few famous guys. And I'm Eskimo Brothers. There's a couple of really famous people. You know, Eskimo Brothers listeners means you banged someone and someone else banged. Michael Jordan, he's Eskimo Brothers with because apparently she's banged Michael Jordan. Wow. And get this, strap on R. Kelly. She wore uh, the strap on and banged R. Kelly. I, there's something, I and guess. I, go, I don't know if you're really Eskimo Brothers in that situation, but it's no. still kind of interesting. That of it's There's something nice about R. Kelly getting fucked. I'll say that. That's my silver lining. Ooh. Yeah. That's all I got. This person isn't a comic, by the way. It's just someone who you might know. Of now you're worried that people are going to yeah, know. Yeah. I, I R. Kelly's, R. Kelly's getting wrong. busted now, though. That's huge. Nobody we know would know this, who I'm talking about, hopefully. Not I'm, worried. I'm chomping at the bit this. here. We're not going to edit this. Right. <laughs> R. Kelly's what? What was the last thing you said? I'm sorry, I missed that. He's going down. He, they think he, they have him. He's moving did you watch that? Did you watch that series? I saw a couple of the Because it was like three parts or four parts. I think it's four or five parts. Yeah, I saw the first two, I believe. It was nuts, man. He is a horrible person. Yeah, terrible. And it's crazy how long it took because Dave Chappelle was doing jokes about him peeing That's on girls in like 05, one 04. of the things that the, yeah they talk about that is like where you feel culpability is where it's like yeah it was just like a punchline <laughs> so e- I mean it really was we just didn't handle it we properly. didn't and yeah. there's so many things like that I feel like they're gonna keep resurfacing yeah it's to me it's amazing yeah. how Mike Tyson is still popular 
That's true. That he, weird. But the R. Kelly one to me is like time, a, a serious like. It's a serious sex slaves, fourteen yeah, year old girls. That real, is, really, he huge, should be yeah. for the rest of his life, and it, hopefully so. Yeah. Yeah, but it's crazy that we need videos and documentaries for us to be like, well, wait a minute. And it's not enough. It's like when Hannibal said the thing about Cosby. It's like that was what cre- it's just weird how I don't know. There's this this thing that we lack where it's like sometimes maybe we just need time and reminders. Time and video. You have yeah. to have video because remember the Ray Rice knocking out his fiance in the elevator. Oh yeah, he got two game suspension. No, initially. I remember. Video came out. And they're like, well, now we got to kick you out of the league. That's uh, the yeah. Well, more good NFL plotting. It's brutal. <laughs> yeah, but that was the same thing with Kareem Hunt. Yeah. It was like he played the whole – I mean, I think that that tape was from before the season this year, and it's like – so he played. I mean, you know, like – and yeah, then you see video, and now he's like cut, and everyone's like, man, we wouldn't an asshole. It's and the like, Cleveland Browns picked him up. Of course, yeah. He almost – he said that she called him the N-word a bunch, and that's why he did it. And so I almost wonder if he – if he was he just Jesse Smollett beforehand? Well, just the, saying it the backwards Smollett. B- backwards Smollett. Yeah. Uh yeah, I even then you can't kick a, you can't not kick a woman. It wasn't even a good I mean, kick. It wasn't. Well, he's not a kicker. No, well, he's not a kicker. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, he's a running back. But the she way they like, ran even, him over then. Yeah. Well, you should have done anything. Right. At least play to your strengths. Yeah. <laughs> right. But I mean, it, it is there is something like I don't know. It's just fucking weird. It's a weird time. I don't know why our our. our it's it's strange because there needs to be like a line in the way we deal with our outrage, but it's not a straight line, and we haven't figured it out yet. So, like when p- people got very upset about things that John Wayne said, uh, you know, ages well, ago. I knew about it. That was first. The internet recycles itself every now and then. It I definitely rem- does. I remember seeing that like seven years ago, being yeah. like, "Oh yeah, he's a piece of shit." He said other worse yeah. horrible things. But then there's most of us who are like, "I don't watch John Wayne movies. I don't really give a shit." And I bet if you like had me like bet, is he a racist asshole or not? I would have been like, "I bet he is." Probably. You know. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's like bigger fish I to fry. I always it funny when people are like, "He's such a tough guy." I'm like, he wears makeup and plays cowboy. How tough yeah. are you? Come yeah. on. His real name is Marion. He's an actor. <laughs> you know, he's, he's an, an actor. actor. You're a different Your big name. tough guy's an actor. Hey, that's another John Wayne. Two first names. That's not his real name. No, stage it's name. not. His real no. name is like Marion something. It's yeah. a real kind of effeminate name. Oh, that's great. That's for where a it comes six from. Orange guy from Iowa. That's where it comes from. So yeah. what well, he you said. Look up his real name, what James? he said was Thanks. was pretty horrible. Oh, it's awful. Yeah, but it is funny that just out of nowhere we're like, fuck him. <laughs> well, Today we hate John Wayne. I know. It's just yeah. Today like, we've just gotten pissed about John Wayne. Real shit to be concerned about. Marion Mitchell Morrison. Marion. It's kind of a Morrison. dope name, though. Uh, the alliteration. The, Mo- the Morrison M&M. School. You know? Yeah, yeah. M&M. And M. M&M. And M. And M. Triple M. That is. Yeah, the I'm Marine Man. I'm M and M and M. I like how your John Wayne sounded like Johnny Cash <laughs> singing M and M or something. Uh, like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it sounded. Like. I'm not afraid. <laughs> To take a stand. I can't do it. <laughs> Everybody. I remember what I used to do a sports podcast for you listeners who aren't aware called Comedians Talking Sports. I had Gareth on, and I discovered Gareth is really good at doing. I mean, you do a, you do some funny shit on the dollop with voices, but you did a killer Conor McGregor. Oh, really? Because remember yeah. at the time McGregor had lost to Diaz the first time, which he came back and won, which was nice. And oh, look, and you're, you're really a big mad. McGregor guy? Of course I was really are. mad, and you were like, you just <laughs> like him because he's Irish. I'm like, all right, fine. That's yeah, probably why. Um, oh, no, it totally. There's something. He's still a badass, though. Look at the way you even just said that. You just were like, he's just still a badass, though. You became all like, <laughs> ooh, girl, he's a badass. Yes, I like him. Yeah, there's so he he's does sassy. something. he does something to the white male that is just, there's something there. I don't know. He's got swagger. He, it's he was, something. He, would talk, he was a gr- as a comedian. I like him because I let thought me it was ask you this. It's funny. Let, let me walk you through this. It's good trash talk. Let me, let me walk you All through right. this. Okay. So so you go to see UFC Conor McGregor fight, and uh, and he wins, and he doesn't get too hurt. After the the match or whatever you guys call it, he <laughs> he's done and he's you know done his press. He's at a steakhouse and you run into him. He's very gracious. He invites you over. He asks, you, sit at his table. You're Irish. Well, well, fuck, come. I'll buy you a fucking ribeye, mate. Sit down. I'll buy you one. You sit down, right? He's buying, You're drinking McGregor whiskey. You're having a good little time, right? Party starts to clear out. You're not going to leave. This is a fucking him, right? They're starting to vacuum the place up, and he kind of moves like a little bit of your hair from behind you. You know, puts it behind your ear a little bit because you just went and got one of your $5 haircuts <laughs> down the street, and he moves your hair a little bit. And he looks at you, and you're sort of sitting there, and he just is like, "Yeah, I really like you." And he leans in. What do you do? 
I, I would. You're uh, not married. I'm not married. No, oh, you're not married. Oh, no Jesus. kids. You should have. This one comes right yeah, off. Yeah, right it? off. Not that easily, actually. Uh, <sighs> he leans in for one, one kiss. <laughs> in a, in a, and keep in mind, we're in a world now where that that even. Why if, don't we go to a bar? Why are we at a steakhouse? that's cleaning up. There's a bar there. Stuff? There's a bar. There. You, okay, cool. Yeah, it's a Morton's. They keep it open for him, right. but this guy spilled some uh, <laughs> blue cheese and you he's vacuuming. You took the vacuuming image, and I'm like, why the fuck? I just all wanted right. to let you know, time had passed. <laughs> Thank you. The staff's not upset. They're like, oh, we'll sit here all night. Nobody's watching. Clearly, you're just two guys in the corner. And he moves your hair back. He just wants to give you a kiss. And this is a world now where this is okay. No, I ba- I, I would back away. You back away? Yeah, okay. I'd back away. Right. I'm not. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but no, I'm not. I can't. Okay. I really just want to hang out with him because I think you got to do that. You, you'd have to. And I, if you want more of that in the future, Connor just needs a little fucking kiss. Just a, just a little kiss. <laughs> a little kiss. A little kiss. Do, what do I get out of the kiss? Let's raise, what do you raise get sticks. out of the kiss, you ungrateful prick? <laughs> You're at a fucking Morton's that's 24 hours with the greatest white <laughs> Irish fighter uh, since uh, far and away. Jack Dempsey, far and away. <laughs> since Tom Cruise and far and <laughs> since away. Since Tom Cruise Joseph, and far go and get away. Joseph, go get your lawn, Joseph. Yeah. Joseph, get your lawn, Joseph. Get your <laughs> That's the whole movie. <laughs> Joseph, go get your lad. Now I'm a boxer. Now yeah. we've got lad. Oh, Far away. Got, I'm a fucking Far boxer. away synopsis. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck that movie with Nicole Kidman. Oh, man. Um, but I'm thinking to myself, if he says, Joe, a little fucking pucker. Yeah. I uh I get I get to you know do I get to walk do I get to walk to the octagon with him am I in his corner yeah my hype man for the next fight the cut guy for uh, for Khabib too maybe yeah. or uh, when he faces Cowboy Cerrone most likely next. you don't want to be at ringside for any of those no it's I getting a little ridiculous yeah. A little dramatic. Do I get some ma- some cash? Because no. he'd have to pay me off. Otherwise, I tell everyone that Conor McGregor you know wants what? to kiss Yours comedians. Is really, no, and he doesn't want to kiss comedians, Joe, you asshole. I, I just it's you. Out. But I'm not into kissing guys. It's not about Although that. Although I would for it's an acting not role. Ab- okay. So what, do I have to pretend this is acting then? Sure. It's You just booked the part of Joe Kilgallen, the guy who's going to kiss Conor McGregor. Uh, I'd give him a smooch. Just a real quick <laughs> That's all I'm saying. No, no lip over lip. Sure. Like A peck. Like your your drunk buddy and you give Dude. him a kiss on the lips, joking around. That's right. Yeah. It's well. Like a mwah, uh, you know? Okay. And there's a little something more to it. But exactly. Mm. Great. I don't know about that. I'm not yeah. that into him. What about you with Aaron Rodgers? I if he had the mustache, I'd give him a kiss. Yeah. Yeah. What do you hear about the rumors about Aaron Rodgers? Do you know there's rumors about him that him that he is gay? Yeah. Yeah. Do you believe it? Uh, I don't really know what to believe. I think it'd be great if he was. I yeah. I would I, not. I, I it would not bother me. I think you and I are both under. The it's s- weird though because it is like. Sp- you know, I think again. We're you know, you talk about how kind of culture and this all sort of shifts. It's like there was a time in my life where being gay obviously seemed very insane, and then there was a time in my life when the Packers seemed like the manliest thing in the world. And now I'm at the point where, yeah, if my if the quarterback of the Packers was gay, I would be like, I would be fine with it. That's a great evolution, yeah. right there. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Jesus. I, uh, <laughs> real classy on the pub. Jesus Christ. I would think. I want the first because there's obviously been people have come out of the closet lately that are professional athletes, but mm-hmm. I want one to be a Pro Bowler, one to be an All Star. You know, there needs to yeah. be some. There needs to be a superstar. Well, but remember when Michael Sam was even, you know, he was like going to potentially make a squad. Yeah, I remember. Uh, oh, what the fuck is her name? Uh, I can't remember her name on e- on ESPN. She's Rachel uh, Nichols. I'm trying to think of the only ones no. I know. But but the reporting was about what he was doing in the shower. It was like. He showers with his teammates, and he it was like something where you were just like, what? Like, we're this unprepared for a gay football player where you're sport. like, he showers like regular. He also urinates standing up, and he's not dying to suck all the guy's dicks. Does he get shampoo in his eyes? I'll tell you what. I bet he'd handle it better than some people I know. <laughs> I I'd imagine he would actually. For know. sure, Michael <laughs> Sam handles shampoo in his eyes a lot better than you do. Fine. Yeah. Michael Sam wins again. You in an NFL. Uh, guys, guys, guys. Good game, but guys, someone flush my eyes. Guys. No, I did it myself, and I think my eyelashes beat into my own fucking eye. So you take the corner of the towel and kind of do that. Don't keep rubbing. You don't. You're saying things like you like we do these things. I you just, take the corner right, of the just towel me. and it's rub just your me. eye. Dude, I just found out that you shouldn't use Q-tips. I'm still sort of struggling with this revelation myself. Yeah, yeah everyone's like, Dude, because get there's off the not Q-tips. an alternative. They're, they're not presenting us with anything. You get water in your ears and swish it around. People say, I don't what? trust that. That's what. No. The, who are you talking to? Witch I doctors. Saw w- a witch doctor. Actually. Oh, that guy's good though. He gets it. You should be swishing. I you swish, swish it around. around. You're I hands. bought a thing Instagram, uh, and I like you know loathe and despise all the amount we're advertised at. The Instagram advertisements do get me, and. uh one was about like a revolutionary thing where it was kind of like a spiraled 
thing and you put it in your ear and you pull it out and it's just like, whoa, look at this. And so I bought those things. I mean, dude, I wish I was filming my reaction because I was like, does anything happen? Like for 20 minutes, I was like, I guess they just suck. Yeah. Yeah. I've you, you can those. use those uh, ear candle things. Yeah. But it seems like a to-do. The, what I like about Q-tips, what I'm sure you, you need like, is the convenience. Dude, it's a you fucking... Just, yeah, it's there. It's shorter than brushing your teeth. But I had a thing where I compacted my one ear and I couldn't hear out of it for like four months. <laughs> And as a comedian, you need to hear yourself. That's a big it's like part your of monitors, it. Your inner monitor was off. Sure. I just said at the Laugh Factory in Chicago, uh, yeah, it was about four months ago when I was dealing with this. And about halfway into my – I think I was doing like 15 minutes maybe. And about halfway in, I just kind of yelling at the audience, calling them shit and being like – I just kind of got pissed off. And I got off stage, and the other comics were like, what the hell was that about? I'm like, no, great fuck set. them. They're tight asses. Yeah. And they go, dude, you were killing. And out of nowhere, you just started yelling at them. And I go, I was killing? Yeah. And they go, yeah. And I go – I couldn't hear him. I, I thought I, I was I bombing. Can't, I can't use Q-tips. That's the that's the thing. I, I can't do. That's what I said. I go. It's these goddamn Q-tips. Yeah, yeah. Just made me compact my ears, my my wax into the brain. Now Q-tips are a sponsor of this show, correct? Because I feel like this is controversial content. Continental is the brand. Oh, con- well, specifically. That's the only one I can think. <laughs> that's of. That's the only Q-tip that Joe will use. And uh, we are thinking about getting a bidet sponsor, though. Yes. Because we have pumped uh, we have pumped bidets a, few, a little bit. They're great. I was, I was about to say the You're brand. You're both and then what James huge like, bidets? Oh man. Well, have here. you not? Have you tried? I don't think I've tried a bidet. You would remember if you had. I don't you think I have. Changed your life, dude. Look, we know you're, you're... I think I'm like Crocodile Dundee with bidets. I'm like, yeah, Crocodile, that ain't all that show. You, you know, but trust me, man. It's You'll start. You'll feel like, oh, this is how people in uh, Skull and Bones, they wipe their butts <laughs> like this. This no. is this. I'm in the 1% right now. <laughs> it is you a, might be. It is, anyway, is a one, it, <laughs> is a, it is a 1% <laughs> toilet. Yeah. It's some 1%er shit right here. Yeah, it is. It's a life but changer. But now they've got the toilet that... The like crazy robot Japanese toilet that will like just fucking song and dance you down yeah, there. Yeah, you know, it hits your butt. I've it's like a cartoon. One. It must be animated. Once I've used one of those. Have no, you but really? then oh, it, like, yeah. it's at it my ha- boss's house. It's incredible. Oh my god! It has the little guy. It has a little thing it has, and it shoots water up your ass and all that shit. It's great. It just makes sense. But I pay my friend of- Gus five bucks, and he does all that. <laughs> See, so it's like. That's I guess over a couple years that is bidet money, but still this guy yeah, he's I, he, he also needs the money and I give him a ten ninety nine every year. You so <laughs> this is like an arrangement. See, you go mom and pop, we're over here at fucking Walmart. Yeah, because you're a better oh, person. Guys, than clean it up. Come on. Yeah, get man. Your shit you're together. Not, I order my you're not Amazon, mobsters. I'm bad. Yeah, come on. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did want to mention this since we're talking about classy things. Your uh, the last episode I, I listened to of the dollop and it's it really is a fantastic podcast. I'm not just kissing your ass because you're here. Thank you, Joe. That's it, the bidet's it, job. That's the bidet. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, yes. That's why they're fucking uh. wonderful. <laughs> uh, Conor McGregor probably has a bidet. Uh, that's why he walks that way. Joe, what would you do? <laughs> <laughs> what, what would I do to be that bidet? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So on that ep- on the episode I saw, as you guys were talking about George H W Bush, which I believe was like what late in last year, like a couple months ago, maybe December ish. Yeah, it came out. I think it's after that. Yeah, maybe yeah, right around yeah, four months ago. Who knows? Three yeah. months ago. No, I'm not saying that. Yes to that. You know. Okay. Okay. Your <laughs> wonderful mother was on the podcast. Yes. And I gotta say, when I heard her speak, because you know I've known you for about, what six seven years now yeah. probably. Your I, I know your 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 parents are from England. Yep. I. When I heard her voice, I remember thinking, "This isn't really his mother. This is." Uh, so an you know that friend. Candace is an actress who plays Pam on the dollop. <laughs> yes, that's what it is because it was the most perfect English woman mother voice yes. I've ever heard. She, now she you Mary mean, Poppins? It was fantastic. Your mother's you just voice mean was the, soothing. It's just right. Okay, yeah. No, I'm yeah. saying it's a great voice. Yes, yes. I well, okay. So for where my family's from in England, the accent is more like, "All right, Joe, you all right, mate? Yeah, good, good on you, mate. Good on you. Yeah, that's how what they part speak. of England." Uh, Stourbridge, which is in the West Midlands, like kind of near Birmingham. So it's a deep, okay. so, yeah, yeah, yeah. My mother and my uh, and her siblings were all given the choice of swimming lessons. This really tells you about what life was like in England in like whatever the fifties and sixties. They're given yeah. the choice of swimming lessons or elocution lessons. Elocution being, you know, a way to sort of class up your uh, British accent, your English accent. Wow. So the three siblings chose swimming lessons. And they all still talk like, oh, yeah, all right, for the most part. Well, My mother on. chose elocution. And so now she has very proper, you know, yes, absolutely, something like that. And the funniest part is recently, like in the last two or three years, one of my uncles was on like a cruise liner. He was like doing a cruise thing or whatever. And they'd sort of like, they were like, you know, docking or whatever. <laughs> and he jumps off and you're allowed to, but he starts to get rough and he can't swim. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> so the whole time he's just there like, well, I should have just gotten elocution lessons because he's, he's drowning. How do you not know how to swim after all that time? I don't know. He, I guess he forgot. Maybe he was just fucking off. Yeah. He yeah. was going to the lesson and then ditching out. We were talking about religion earlier. I had CCD because I went to a Chicago public grade school. And CCD was basically like a catechism class that like the public school kids would go to if they were Catholic so we could still make our confirmation and, and do all the other sacraments along with the Catholic grade school kids. Sounds really fun and cool. I was such a troublemaker. There was a couple times where I just ditched it. I just didn't go. Yeah. I did that with day camp once, too, because the park day was around camp. the block. Dude, what the I fuck? They, they, you've got – there's separation of church and state, even though it's No, I didn't go to a Catholic ignored. day camp. I went to a city day camp that oh. like kids went to. They were oh, pretty popular. okay. I thought you were talking about going to like – No, I would camp. ditch that, and then it reminded me that I ditched other things. Oh, okay. I remember That's ditching um, day camp, and my dad caught me. I was like, I thought you were going golfing. Why are you here? Like, He's like, I was at home instead park. watching Arrested Development, Joe. I'm enjoying my retirement. Go to your fucking camp. He's into all the best shows. I tell I tell people, I'm like, my dad got me into this show. He got me into that show. And yeah. they go, really? Because shouldn't your dad be watching CBS? I'm like, oh, no. He still watches CBS, it, too. It, don't yeah. get me wrong. He's the guy. That's no, what, but he watches it all, Every time they say that CBS is the number one rated network, I'm like, but I don't know anybody who likes he it. He just watches a lot of TV. But yeah. he's got such a weird taste where... He'll bring up a show that I've never heard of, and then six months later, everyone's like, I can't believe they canceled this show, The Finder, or whatever the hell. Right. Show. It's some show where everyone goes crazy for. Like He, he got me in It's Always Sunny. He's like, oh, you have wow. got to watch That's this show. That's a good one. No, he said, yeah, he's got me in all these really That's great shows. That's a good show for a dad to recommend, too. But then he also liked Two and a Half Men. So it's kind of a weird thing where I'm like, you just like anything on TV, I yeah. feel like. Yeah. Two and a Half Men is Because really he's got great bad. taste in movies, too. But then every now and then it'll well, be like. Well, you're also at the point now where it's like it is so hard to know what to watch. I it's like I think I at least personally like have peaked from when I was like, wow, there's so many options. It's great to the point now where I'm like, I'm a little paralyzed. I don't know which way to turn. I always am like, this it could be better. I could find a better thing. You think too much choice could be a bad thing in that sense? Yeah. I get you know we get the screeners for uh, the best pictures and stuff coming up. Yeah. I've got a stack of them at home. I haven't watched one of them yet. You know why? Because every time we were about to, my wife and I were like, all right, cool, let's watch Vice. Let's watch Bohemian Rhapsody. Let's watch The Favorite. Let's watch one of these. I haven't seen any of them. Have them. It's right on top of the Blu-ray player there. We start to talk about, all right, yeah, I kind of want to see Vice. And she goes, wait, how long is it? I'm like, two hours and 15 minutes. She's like, we've got to fight Can you find this. one less of one that's a little bit, like, all right, let's see. <laughs> we have to They're fight all like, this. And then eventually we just say, fuck it. Let's watch reruns of something we've already seen. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting to that point. But man, Vice is bad. really good. And I'll say, I, would, I was not planning on watching Bohemian Rhapsody. And then uh, last week when I was flying back, uh, they had it on the plane. And so I was like, yeah, all right, I'll watch it. It's really like I hate those movies with a passion because it's always just like so trite. It's just like you can't tell the story of someone's life that extravagant in a film. You can't. It's too much. This yeah. is a really good way to do that. They just found a way to like it, it's a really good movie. You know, what's crazy to me, though. Everyone I know who talks about Bohemian Rhapsody either loved it or hated it. I really thought I would hate it, too, which maybe helps the experience. You maybe. Know? Yeah. That's why I think I might like it, because everyone's telling me I, I would hate it. It's kind of like, Dude. and I try not to let that stuff way, uh, influence me. Yeah. Because I don't take it's movies also, that seriously. Oh, man. And, like, I mean, this is how you and I both were after we saw uh, Montage of Heck. Like, yeah. you just, the amount of Queen you listen to after that movie, you're like, boy, Queen really is good. They, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, how much Nirvana did you? Yeah, we both saw Montage of Heck, that Kurt uh, Bain documentary, which was his birthday yesterday. I'm wearing a Nirvana shirt, 52. which I wear anyway, but I actually specifically saw it in my drawer. This was something we were talking about with the Life Swap earlier. You saw Nirvana live. I did. Didn't you see him twice or once? I saw him twice. God, I hate you for Tw that. Once, once when I didn't really know that that what was going on. Because you had a cool on. older brother. I had a cool older brother who was in a death metal band. That's really cool. Yeah, and then yeah, and then I saw them on in U the In Utero tour. So I saw them before. They were huge, and then I saw them like at the peak. I mean, right, you were before so he damn left. young. You were just like yeah. I was like, f I mean, when I saw them, on in blue. I mean, it must have been like, it's yeah, like fifteen or yeah, sixteen. You'd, you'd maybe 15, a little bit younger, maybe. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Man. So I yeah, and then and then because they, my brother, one of the places my brother would play in Milwaukee, uh, was a place where they would play, and it was this they like a it was a a guy who owned a Mexican cantina. He uh, also owned this club. And so I was allowed to like I could go in there sometimes and shit like that. And there was a time when they were in there playing like early. Kurt Cobain to me, I I can't think of someone to me. You've t it's, that's why I want to believe it was a murder. I want to believe he was murdered because he I think he's one of the coolest human beings to ever live. Yeah. Because he had this I don't give a fuck attitude, but not in like a douchey way. Obviously, he also said stuff that was 
uh, talk about the outrage age. Yeah. You know, he said stuff that was how we kind of think now pretty openly when it was a little startling to the yes. regular culture. He was doing stuff where they were doing like LGBT fundraiser yeah. shows back when that he, wasn't and cool. I, he has a quote where it's just like if you are if you don't support uh, people who of other races, if you do not think women are equal like shit like this, then fuck off. Don't come to our shows. Don't buy our shit. We don't want you. It's on the fan. inside jacket of the Incesticide uh, album, which yeah. Incesticide came out between Nevermind and In Utero. The it was, weird it was one. just B sides. Yeah. It was a mix of some. There was like a couple new tracks, but it was all like B sides and yeah. weird fuck around Bit stuff. Of sun and shit. Yeah, yeah they the. Uh, D DGC David Geffen company wanted uh -huh. him to put something out because they were so hot. They're like, give us another thing to throw out there because we're you know we want to capitalize on this. He, he he goes, I'll put something out, but I have to be in complete control of the artwork. So he painted the cover, right? Which, which is I, really insane. Yeah, which yeah, he was a fan, fucking fantastic yeah. artist, big Salvador Dali influence. You yeah, can see yeah, in a lot yeah. of his work, which is cool. And uh, and then in the inside jacket of that, it basically was like if you all the stuff that now like he was a woke dude totally. in, in 1992. Yeah, and talking about. You know, um, rape. But, yeah. Bikini Kill is going back on tour. Uh huh. And what's her name? Kathleen Hanna, the lead singer. Uh huh. She told a story about how she got like sexually assaulted, and no one believed her except Kurt. Yeah. And then another time where they found out they're in Seattle or just outside of Seattle, whatever town they were living at the time in Washington, there was a fake abortion clinic that they found out was a fake abortion clinic. It was really like they thought she she wanted to go in and get an abortion and it was just people talking you out of it. It was like one of those oh, set up things right, that right, were kind right. of big at that time yeah. throughout America that these like right wing Christian groups right, would set yeah, up. Right. You'd walk in there being like, could I, you know. Of course, yeah. Just yeah. talk to this priest Here's about it Jesus, for four you know, hours right and then we'll see if you want it. We don't have the equipment. Sit down. Yeah, basically that yeah. type of thing. So then they went to vandalize it at night. Oh, nice. And she wrote like fake abortion clinic. And then he wrote, God is gay. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> Kurt was such an artist. <laughs> she tells yeah. the story really it well. Is, it it's is on a, YouTube. God is gay is like a great uh, way to under, like that's, that, that hurts them. That sticks it to them. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. And, but, and, and not just being like a cool person, being ahead of his time in that sense. He also just was fucking raw and honest. Yeah. So it always cracks me up when people talk about, look, I think Kanye West is a dickhead in a lot of ways, but when he would talk shit about like, oh, I think this artist sucks. I don't think that's that crazy. Yeah. Elvis would talk shit about the Beatles. That's how it always was music. Yeah. Kurt would be like, there was one time where um, he talked about Bon Jovi. And he goes, yeah, I'm sure Bon Jovi's a wonderful guy. His music fucking sucks. Yeah. Like, and just like the way he candidly was just like, yeah, I don't get why he's lighting a cigarette. Like, yeah, you know. And him in interviews I thought was great. They'd be like, what does this song mean? He goes, what do you think it means? Yeah. I'm more interested in that. Yeah. I don't care. Like, no, and he also just wrote like mysterious lyrics and shit. Like, it, truly, that, that, you know, it sounds... I'm sure there are a lot of people who feel this. And a lot of people think it's stupid, but it's like, you know, music was like at a rough time in my adolescence where there was something that that really struck and spoke to and no doubt helped me deal with some fucking problems, you know, like it there was something, me, yeah. there was something there that like, and I, and I don't, you know, I think every generation probably thinks that about that one, but that was like, it's not the Beatles, but that was for s some people like, you know, there's like a connection there that was bigger than just the guy making music. It was also somebody who just kind of like spoke to the general kind of like apathetic attitude you yeah. felt at that time, you know, where you kind of felt useless. You didn't feel like a human. And there was just something in there that just made you connect to it and feel like it was a little more okay. Yeah, and he had a sense of humor too. I feel Funny like that as goes, shit. That goes so overlooked. Dude, when he's on top of the pops <sighs> and they make him, uh, they make them pretend to play. And the way tell he people sings, what Top of the Pops is real quick. I top don't of the think Pops the is a, is an English uh, show where basically they invite like whatever big, you know, kind of like. Uh, I can't remember what that show is called, but uh, the, it's like basically Total Request Live was for us sort in the of, early but, 2000s. But more like they would, inv it's more like Dick, that Dick American Bands. There thing. you go. Good, it's a little more call. like that, where it's just sort of like there are people kind of milling around and they dance and they watch and then bands come out and play. And they always had this explicit thing where they just didn't want the, the musicians to play their instruments. And, you know, much like when uh, you are invited on something like that, you probably protest, but then they go, no, that's how we do it. And you go, okay, fall in line. Everybody does. Singer sings, though. So all the instruments are fake, being fake played. They just have that, and then the singing is is real. But they have the backup singing and all that. It's almost like karaoke, and um, and so you know they're all 
they're not even hamming it up too much, but Kurt doesn't play his guitar one time. Not once. And so he's just got his guitar around his neck, and he's singing Smells Like Teen Spirit, but instead of singing it with the regular ants, he's just going like, here we are now, entertain He's singing us. like a lounge act. Here, yeah, and it's <laughs> long. <laughs> Load up on guns yeah. and bring, bring your, the whole yeah. thing. And it's so just funny. Like, and then Chris Novoselic, you could tell, isn't playing the bass. Yeah, he starts he throwing starts up in the air. Crazy, yeah. And Dave Girl's pointing one drumstick this way and pointing it the other way. Yeah. It's, yeah, then because at first they started off. They're and in then I first. think Kurt started to sing it the weird way. Yeah. And then maybe they're like, oh, well, fuck, this is yeah, great. Yeah. And I have a friend, There's um, he produces shows in, in Chicago at Under the Gun Theater. They're called the Lincoln Lodge. Anyone in the Chicago area, check those out. This guy, Mark Geary, great producer. He's, an, he's from England, still speaks with that ridiculous accent here we go not as good as your mother's thank you and he talked about how everyone was hyping up nirvana and they're gonna be on top of the pops this week you gotta see him and he had no idea who they were but all his friends just could not shut up about this band and he went in there thinking oh fuck them they're probably gonna be terrible i'm not a, you know blah 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 like he was in dead in american music at the time and then he saw that performance and knew what they were doing and was like i'm a fan for life yeah this was fucking awesome yeah. and he did have that rock star attitude you yeah know? the unplugged in new york was obviously one of the greatest one of those yeah. i i always love there's this i don't know if it was them at live at reading i think when they do uh, the song breed which is just a great riff thing and i even read that he wrote the solo so he could run around the stage playing like a maniac because oh, the whole yeah. thing's like it's yeah, just yeah, crazy yeah. you could just run around and just fuck it and it still sounds cool yeah because all the songs are super simple, but they sound cool. Yeah. I hate when I meet music snobs like, oh, their songs are easy. And I'm like, yeah, all the greatest songs ever are fucking easy. It's true. And that's why they're the best. Yeah. That's just how that works. I, I don't care about – I think people get too technical because it's boring. It, it kills the creativity. Yeah. So uh, he's he hits like the last part going before the solo, like uh, she said, you know, and then he, he turns and the mic stand with the mic still in it falls to the ground. So he's running around playing the solo and all this stuff. He notices oh, yeah. the mic stands on the ground. He drops to his knees and sings into it with yeah. like his hair over his face, like on the with the mic like laying the mic laying on the ground. Sings into that. Yeah. And it looked. It was like if you had never seen them, is that that was your first glimpse of Nirvana? Good improv. You would be yes. <laughs> if you you'd be like that's a fucking rock star yeah. right there. That dude's a rock star. And uh, Oasis had that too. They did a thing on top of the pops where yeah. they all switched around. Yeah. Where uh, Noel was playing a tambourine and Liam was pretending to play guitar. After Nirvana though. After Nirvana, yeah. That definitely Nirvana did it first. They were cooler. Yeah. I am a big Oasis fan though, and you got to interview Matt Whitecross, I think his name was, who did the documentary. Sort of, yeah, yeah, on, on Burns Podcast. That's he Steve he, Burns he podcast, carried yeah. it. I okay, was, he's obsessed. I was he obsessed. Steve Byrne, a good mutual friend of yes, ours. Obsessed. obsessed with that guy. Yes. Yeah. It's a good band though. Good yeah. band. Yeah. Yeah, they were fun. I mean, when I was in England, like younger, like that was like one of the I mean, it was huge. It's great, man. Their fucking music. So we're talking about all these cool people now. Kirk Cobain, obviously. Uh, I have a question I like to ask people. I've been doing this the last few podcasts. I used to do a series of questions before, and um, one I'll throw your way. Sure. Instead of making you pick, I used to, you said people pick. Some people don't want to answer the question, but I feel like you're pretty cool and might answer it. Uh, so the first question before the other one, you're giving me a look like, Joe, what the fuck are you doing? I'm here? just curious where this is headed. If you're setting up quite a question. I am setting it up uh, too much, maybe. Gareth Reynolds. Yeah. How did you lose your virginity? Oh, you can um, pass. You can pass if you don't want to answer it. I'll give you the quick version. Okay. I in England, kids lose their virginity Are you so lost in young. England? You don't split. No, yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm <laughs> no, no, no. And so they they lose their virginity like very very early, like shockingly early. And so I remember when I was there, and I was probably thirteen. Friends of mine would be like, "Mate, you're still a virgin." <laughs> And I'd be like, I'm like 13. Like, I'm still not ready for sex, I'm sure. And then there was a girl I'd met who uh, had like a crush on me. And then, so, you know, we'd drink and we'd, you know, we'd go like have cans of cider and shit and, at that age. And so I was 15. And this girl had like wanted to like sleep with me. And so I was re like ready to do it, you know. So I went to this, my favorite pub at the time called Pins, Pints, and Platters. Where There's they would no let drinking me in. age there, right? No, there is. For oh. some reason, this place would just serve me and my cousin. Cool. What is the drinking age there? 18. 18. But, okay. I mean, it's definitely not like, you know, they're pretty chill. But but places would turn you down if you were not 18. I mean, it would happen, you know? Sure. But this place would serve me when I was 15, and I looked like I was 12. And so I went to the bathroom, bought a whiskey-flavored condom, 
and uh That's and a then thing? yeah i guess wow. i don't know why and then uh i had my cousin had a party when his uh parents were out of town and then then i lost my virginity that nice uh, that i evening. like that too yeah. with a whiskey flavored condom with on. a whiskey flavored condom on. yeah and i still to this day will not have sex without a whiskey flavored condom <laughs> yeah, you're loyal to your yeah. brand yeah, yeah I, found, I found a winner <laughs> there you go i found a winner beautiful and the other question if you could drink with anyone living or dead they have to be famous you can't be sentimental and name sure. some you know Long lost cousin. I don't care. Sure. Uh, you know. Rude. Sorry, but That's I don't. That's what I was going to name. <laughs> name. Uh, who, who would it be? Who would you drink with? Anyone from history? I know it's kind of a big question. Loaded, putting you on the spot a little bit there. I just watched a documentary on Buster Keaton recently. And not only did he like to drink, he was pretty awesome. Uh, and just so revolutionary when it comes to like timing and just slapstick and all this shit. Uh, and subtlety. That uh, I would, I, I'm at a phase right now where Buster Keaton would be who I'd want to sit down. What are a few of Buster Keaton's big hit movies? I know I know the name, but I'm not putting it to his work at the moment. I mean, there, you probably don't know his movies as much as just clips and shit, like famous yeah. clips. But they're, you know, like The General is probably his biggest one they talk about. That's okay. Yeah. Now I'm I'm, I'm yeah. picturing a little bit better. Buster Keaton. Yeah. What would you drink with him? Ooh. What beverages do you think Buster would be into? He liked beer. It sounded like so. I'd have beer. 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 Beer guy. Beer. Yeah, you're not, but you're a mixed drink guy, aren't you? Nah, not really. No. I like wine, actually. Really? You got it? Are you in, is this new re revelation? Yeah, it's a couple years old, yeah. How are you feeling about that? Not great. I wish I hadn't mentioned it. Yeah, I could tell that about you. <laughs> Some people, can, I, I've had a few friends where they get into a red wine phase, but they don't address it. Yeah. I feel like when you start, when you switch, you can't be a guy who's drinking Miller oh, Lite. Oh, it gets addressed style. for you. Yeah. And it then is addressed for that's you. That's true. Because I remember my one friend, Kenny, walked up and he, was, he had a glass of red wine and we're all just looking. I'm like, you going to explain that? What's going on with no. that? Because two weeks ago you were like 30 rack of bush light. Yeah. And now yeah. you're just acting like now red you're like, wine. That was a good year. Yeah. Yeah. New year, new me, red yeah. wine. Are you one of those people? Yeah. Are you what's so? Are you like uh, Paul Giamatti, just smelling wines now? Very much so. In don't, many ways, don't I'm like smell Paul them. I, look, I'm not against wine. I get it. Wine's very popular. I've had a few decent wines here. Sure. There. Compliments a meal. I hate the fucking people who hold the glass like this. You know, like it's like it's a fucking beer can. Yeah. <laughs> which one? okay. It's like it's like a test tube. You know I what agree. I mean? it, can, it can become very pretentious very quickly. I do not plan on getting on that level. Don't get don't do it. I won't. Garrett. I'll stay humble, baby. I look, man, I I I'm, I will encourage you in any all, in all of your endeavors. Thank you. If you go down that road, I don't know how I'm going to handle it. Thank you. All right. Gareth, now you you got the dollop. You got uh point versus point with your man Evan man. Yep. I like how I said that. Yep. Anything else on the horizon? Uh, writing on a show called Hoops. Uh, I'm always on tour with shit, GarethReynolds.com. Hoops with Jake Johnson. Jake Johnson, Chicago boy. I remember, yeah, great Cubs fan, Bears fan, Jake great Johnson. I've, I've never met him, but I know you love him, and he's a he's fans of my favorite teams. Yeah, and New Girl, issue, my dad loved New Girl, got me to New Girl from my dad. It's a good show. I was a big Stay, fan of New Girl. Stick around for season eight. You might see a security guard. Season seven, by the way. Oh, it whoa, was season seven, whoa. and I, I remember the episode because <laughs> when I was watching with my wife, I'm like, it's fucking Garrett. Yeah. You have this is how we'll end it. This is how funny Gareth is. You're a hilarious guy, man. Uh, I'm gonna make fun of you on the car ride back because I feel like I've kissed your ass too much. Thank you. So I have to bring you back down to earth. I remember my uh, wife posted a thing on Facebook, like you know, maybe in 2015, we were maybe living in LA for like a year, um, of my dog hanging out the window. Because remember we'd go on car rides, you know, LA. Oh, I miss it's probably 80 degrees there right now. It's fucking shitty it's here. Gorgeous. Uh, my dog would always have her like. L uh, paw hanging out the window, uh -huh. which was great because every now and then we'd be at a red light and there'd be people going like, "This fucking dog's a ball!" Look at this dog. You know, people get all pumped up. By I'm talking about black guys sure. with that accent I just did. And uh, I remember she posted a picture on Facebook saying, "Guess who loves car rides?" And you commented, "Joe, it's <laughs> Joe, isn't it? I bet it's Joe." And like you wrote it out just like that. And to this day, my wife, whenever I if I've ever have to bring you up, she thinks of that because how funny she laughed about that for like a week. She thought it was I'm just a winner. hysterical. I'm a winner. And when we saw you on that episode, we were like. Fucking Gareth. Hell yeah. On uh, Season 8 of New Girl. Watch out for him, everybody. I love you, Jeff. Gareth Reynolds, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Guys, follow him on Twitter at Gareth Reynolds. Instagram, wonderful. Get more pictures of the cat, though. We appreciate thank you. that. Everyone, thanks for listening. It's been Killian's Pub. Cheers. Thanks, bud. I got to take another shit. Do you? Well, go shit, and then I'll drive you back. Okay. I'll get you back by five. That's why I was rushing at the end. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> All right, we're out. <laughs> that was a good podcast, right? Really? Yeah, this is like, this is the same one.
I didn't get to check it at all, which I'm glad I shouldn't be checking yeah, my phone. Yeah, dude, I was going to say, like, this is just a note to me. And also, if you have notes for me, let me know. But uh, No, I never have any notes.